animals and living creatures have a necessary place in the scheme of existence. So the locusts are here for a reason. The street dog exists for a reason. The bat, the raccoon, the skunk. Their lives are as meaningful as ours, crafted into the grand design by the same ultimate source. All lives are purposeful. All lives are interconnected. You've heard of the ecosystem, right? It's a community of living organisms in a specific environment. Now the biosphere, also known as the ecosphere, is the sum of all ecosystems in the world. It extends from the deepest roots of trees to the darkest ocean trenches. This is an incredible system where everything is linked to everything else. In this giant, dynamic, self-sustaining system, every species has a role and is performing a service that is impacting other life. Each species influences the survival and growth and the presence and absence of other species in the form of symbiotic circular relationships. What all of this is contributing to is an internal balance and equilibrium within and across ecosystems. The climate is no exception. It is weaved into and is part of the intricate web in which humans, animals, and the environment are all impacting each other. So you may not have thought about this before, but the global challenge of climate change and climate dilapidation is closely connected to animals. This connection is two-way. Animals both affect and are affected by the climate. The effect of climate change on animals manifests in many different ways. The change in climate, for instance, impacts animal habitats, making them less comfortable, in some situations even inhospitable. This is making more animal species go extinct. It's killing them. You may have seen images of melting sea ice in the Arctic and the plight of the polar bear. The food that animals eat is affected by increases in pollution. Some animals have to change their feeding and breeding patterns in order to survive the impact of climate change. Now I want us to think about how animals affect climate change. I was amazed to discover that animals and wildlife are actually one of the most vital solutions for the climate crisis. Animals remove phenomenal amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, so a biodiverse ecosystem naturally works as what is known as a carbon sink. Uh, there was a wide-scale uh, study led by Yale professor Oswald Schmidt, which included 15 scientists from eight countries. They looked at nine wildlife species. Their findings showed that restoring the population of these wild animals can lead to the capture of six billion tons of carbon dioxide each year. This is 95% of the amount needed to achieve the Paris Agreement target of keeping global temperature rise below 1.5 degrees Celsius. All we need to do is to let the wildlife live. There are five animals which are considered ecosystem engineers, African forest elephants, sea otters, Tapers, whales, and wolves are all essential allies in our battle against the climate crisis. How do elephants help? They don't need to do anything special. By just going about their daily business, they're protecting the climate. When African elephants walk through the jungle in search for food, they trample on fast-growing plants and bushes. This enables the slower-growing trees to establish themselves. These trees absorb far more carbon from the atmosphere than aggressively growing plants. This way, in its lifetime, each elephant helps in the capture of 9,000 tons of carbon. According to economist Ralph Chami, the carbon capture services that African elephants perform every year are worth $150 billion. And if we were to pay them for their lifetime services, we would be paying them at least $2.3 million each. It is fascinating that these elephants' footprints are literally helping to erase the carbon footprint that humans imprint. And it is so heartbreaking that these same animals who help us by just existing are poached and killed 
for ivory worth a few thousand dollars. Humans. Let's look at the ocean. The carbon capture potential of whales is also truly astonishing. They absorb 33 tons of carbon on the average in their lifetime. And what is more amazing is that when they die, their bodies sink to the bottom of the ocean, keeping the stored carbon out of the atmosphere for centuries, practically forever. One whale does work equal to 1,500 trees. Even their excrement help. Their droppings serve as fertilizer for phytoplankton, which seizes 10 gigatons of carbon from the atmosphere each year. Tragically, whale populations have drastically declined due to human beings, pollution, hunting, warming oceans. Restoring their population would work wonders in our fight against climate change. This is nature's perfect carbon sink technology if only we allow it to take its course. The more you read about animals, the more amazing it gets. The services that they are performing for the planet are priceless. The animals know what to do. They are protecting us. What can we do to protect animals and so contribute to ecological balance? One, we need to become aware of the importance of animals. Educate yourself, educate others. Each animal is playing a role. Each animal is performing a service. Each animal belongs. Two, we need to care. Do what is in your power to safeguard the rights of animals and advocate for their well-being. Whether we are talking about endangered species, illegal hunting, poaching, animal trafficking, or the mistreatment of working animals, donkeys, horses, and mules, or cruelty to animals in industries, Animal abuse is widespread, which is very tragic, as well as ironic. We are destroying not only the climate, but the climate protectors as well. We need to speak for animals, transforming the narrative, highlighting them as smart, sentient, and sacred, meant to be taken care of and celebrated, respected and protected, not berated as mere objects or consumer goods. When you are protecting one life form, you are protecting all life. In protecting another, you are protecting yourself. In 2019, my passion for protecting animals materialized into the development of the Animal Welfare and Protection Society at Lahore College for Women University. The society works independently and in collaboration with other organizations for animal welfare on and off campus at many different levels. For instance, in our One Health-based project, students work to improve the well-being of working animals as well as their owner families. If this model of a student-based society is replicated in campuses, schools, colleges, universities, across Pakistan, across the globe, imagine the contribution that we will be making towards global well-being and a sustainable future. What you do doesn't have to be something huge. The smallest act of compassion matters greatly and creates a ripple that can reverberate through lifetimes. Let us join hands to respect the sanctity of life and the kinship of all species. Our survival is literally depending on it. Thank you very much.